So it's your boy Downsize, and we're back once again on my block with another hood classic. We're here with your boy Kenan Carvajal, uh, Phoenix's yeah. finest, Nine Street's finest in the gym, getting it in, doing this interview. And um, so go ahead and introduce yourself, brother. Yeah, Kenan Carvajal, Not everyone knows me as Beto. It's an honor to be here. OG, thanks for having me. So first off, first off, because you were just you just brought this up, break dancing. Talked about your video, Fantastic Four. So you were part of Fantastic yeah. Four's two. Yeah, all right, all right, 2.0. Yeah, yeah, you was Fantastic yeah. Four's too. Because yeah. I'm part of Fantastic Four's one. The originals, all right. But that's, right. that's interesting to know. So you, you used to break dance too. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Up, up, up at Birdie Park. That's where I grew up. Okay, so 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 growing up, you... You, you want to know what's crazy though? So when I was little, so I hadn't cut my hair yet. So I was about, probably about seven years old. We go to the Rock Steady Festival in San Diego. Yeah. Me, my mom, my dad, my tío Angel, we all and, and and the crew. Everybody went out there. As we were leaving, we ran into Crazy Lades, right? Yeah. And I was like, Damn. And, then, and then my mom was like, Oh, can can you like take a picture or whatever? And I I like I battled him or whatever. So I did a little windmill and whatnot, and he gave me his chain. He wow. gave me his chain. Crazy part. Last year when I fought on pay per view, he was at my fight. Dang. He was at my fight. So him and uh, Lennox Lewis, they came down. Uh, I found out he was at my fight because after the fight, we all, everybody's out in the parking lot and I run into him. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so crazy, crazy Lennox was at my fight. Wow. Yeah. Great segue. Great segue <laughs> into the into the boxing career. So let's talk about your, your boxing career. So were you around the same age when you were boxing and breakdancing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was my routine. That was my routine. I would uh, I would go to school, go go to the gym, and then I would go to the park, and that that's that was my routine since I was little. Boxing break yeah, dance. Boxing break dancing. School and then boxing, um, about like twelve years old, that's when I started like fighting for real. So I didn't I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have time for anything else. And then by then it was uh, by twelve I was already I was already done. So by twelve years old you were you were. Yeah, I mean, boxing full yeah, time. I mean, obviously, much. yeah, like my my Theo angel like that that happened when I was nine, and then so like it, it just it stopped after that anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, at what at what point did your career do you feel that you dedicated your all? How old were you? Fifteen? I think you told me that one. Ah, uh, you know it's interesting. Interesting enough. I knew that I knew that I was gonna make something of this when my thought that went away. When my thought that went away to prison. Yeah. And I I don't like to say I did it by myself, but when it was just me out here, that's when I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna make something of this. Like this ain't gonna be done in vain. Like it, it became a challenge to me at that point. And I was like, nah, nah, like I'm gonna do this. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get all you guys back and when my, when my thought that gets home, I'm gonna prove something to everybody that I'm better than you guys. And that's when it clicked to me, like, oh, I'm like, I'm really gonna do this shit now. So I was like 15, 16. And you've been. You've I been... take that back. I'm sorry. 17. I was 17 years old when that happened. Wow. Yeah. So my thought when I was 15, I didn't fight till I was 17. And when I fought and I was like alone by myself, that's when I was like, nah, fuck that. Like, all right, I'm not gonna stop. So you fought gold. You fought. You fought gold uh -huh. gloves. And... Yeah, I won. I won to stay golden gloves. Yeah. Did you? Mm-hmm. So how long did you fight gold gloves? And, I mean, it's a weekend. It's a weekend tournament. So a lot of people have like a misconception about that. Yeah. It, the Golden Gloves is just a tournament, and that's um, yeah. So it was it was a weekend tournament. I won. I won the whole weekend, and then that's when I was um, designated or uh, officiated the, the the state winner. And your first and your first professional fight. My first professional fight was uh, two thousand was May of twenty, May of thirteen, May two thousand thirteen. And you were how old? Twenty three. Twenty three. And what was that experience like stepping into that ring for the first time pro yeah yeah at no. that age and you did it yourself like you told me you no so my all right so my professional debut that um my thought my thought that got out when i was 21. yeah so we went straight we went straight to the pros from there um and then like i was like i was telling you earlier like six contracts fell out so i didn't fight for like a whole year and a half yeah. and then finally i got my first fight I, I lost my first fight, but it, it, um, the experience, it was just, that that's what it was. I lost from the inexperience. Like, one, I hadn't been in the ring in so long. And then, two, there's a 
huge gap between amateurs and pros. Yeah. Like, it's just like the, everything. The lights get to you, the small gloves. I mean, I take that back. Not, not necessarily the gloves, but just the, the tempo of the fight. Yeah. Your, your adrenaline's going and just feel, you feel it a lot more. And that, um, that's the, the pros. It's just, it's a whole different game in that way. You, know, you, you feel you had control of the fight? That first time? I did until I, I did it. <laughs> I did, and then I, just my inexperience, it wasn't able to handle it through that whole, through that whole time. So how have you grown from that very first fight to now as a fighter? Have I grown? Um, my, my comfort, my comfort. And that, that only came from experience. Right. The, how comfortable I am in there, I can hear my thoughts talking to me the whole time. I can, I, I can hear him from, I mean, I fought in front of thousands of people and I could still hear him. And that came from the comfort. I wouldn't, that wouldn't have been able to happen from my first fight. I had to learn that. That had to, that had to be practiced. That had to be, like I was telling you, like me and him are in here every day in the gym. And I hear his voice all the time, all the time, all the time. All right, well, I had to gain ring experience to be able to still hear him in the ring in a fight. No matter how many people are around, no matter what's going on in front of me, I still, it took experience to be able to have that skill. Right, right. So your first title fight, what was that like? First who was one. who was that first? That, so it's that that W. No, no, no. I take that back. The IBF one, that red one. Uh, yeah, that was for the IBF Latino fight, the IBF Latino title. And um, I remember when I seen that belt. When I seen that belt, I was like, oh shit! Like, it something took over me. It was like, oh, like I got to do whatever to get this belt. Like that, I just remember seeing that battle. I was like, "That's, that's what it looks like, huh?" All right, let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. But let's go get it. Wow. So, it, and I'm looking at it now. And you're saying that it's it's making me light up because yeah, I could just imagine. That's, that's what it like. You you grow up as a kid, like seeing these bouts, You're like, "Oh, that, that's it. That that's that's." And that's you it. grew up seeing them too yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And how did that inspire you? motivate you as a boxer seeing that growing up it made it real it made it real it made it like i okay if i listen to my thought the, if i listen to his guidance and i put the work behind it put two and two together this is all i gotta do to get here yeah. that's seeing seeing it made it real to me right it wasn't like a like a lot of people like to say like oh i um i'm living a dream or i dreamed about this or i mean and, that sounds good, but the truth is, like, you, you got to vision it. Like, you got to see it, and you got to see yourself in it. Yeah. And that's that's what, that that was the gift from, from seeing it. It was like, oh, that, okay, I know what that looks like. Also, I know what it takes to get there, too. Right. So I just got to put the work in. That's, it, 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 it eliminated everything else but the work. It was about, okay, you put this work in, you know, you know what it takes to get there. You know what it looks like to get there. You just gotta work to get it. Okay, well let's talk about the let's talk about the work that you do put in to get it. You know what I mean, because I think that's really, really, really important. Um, how much time do you put in in the gym? So, so we can get this kids to understand this. Cause we're gonna segue to the kids. Yeah, right? all right. Yeah, no. Um, so I'm up every morning at five in the morning. I run at five in the morning. I run six miles. Come back. Um, I mean, at this point, yeah. Where I'm at now in my life, so uh, yeah, six in, uh, I'm sorry, five in the morning, I get up, I run six miles, come back, chill with my kids, and then I go to the gym. I come here to the gym at four o'clock. And then whether I'm sparring or doing the mitts or just my regular boxing workout, that takes like, I'm not out of here till about seven o'clock. Pure dedication. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, definitely a lot of work, but that same work is what gives you the confidence to step in that ring. Right. That's that. That was probably the best advice that any fighter has given me. Alexis Arduello, that's my favorite fighter of all time. I remember he told me when I was young, he told me, uh, "Boxing is a beautiful sport, only if you're in shape." Wow. And that, and I understood. I understand what he's saying now. Wow. Uh, okay, you got it. If you if you get tired in there, it's wow. <laughs> if you get tired in there, it's how three minutes is a lifetime if you're not in shape for it. But if you're in shape and you're conditioned and you look at yourself in the mirror before you walk out, you say you see yourself all ripped up, like yeah, I'm, I'm a bad motherfucker, and you step in there with that attitude. 
hey, it's go time, it's show time. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it on you. But if you are not in shape and you got a little gut and you know that you didn't run all your miles and all that, it's gonna be a long night for you. <laughs> right. And I was just thinking that you're saying that, like life in general, right? Good health would require if you're gonna live a long life, you're gonna have to be in shape. Yeah, you, you gotta be fit yeah. for that. You gotta, for that you gotta be equipped for it. Life. You gotta be equipped for it. As long as you're equipped for what, whatever the task is at hand, as long as you know yourself that your condition and your endurance is there to outlast it, whatever. So what was the, what, what, what do you think the greatest obstacle you've had to overcome yourself to get to this point as a champion? In boxing? Uh, I was, so what we spoke to earlier, what we spoke to earlier about um, that time, and like I said, I, I have a hard time saying I did anything by myself but the time that my thought that wasn't there, all, although I, earlier I just told you like it, it, it ended up being my motivation to say like, hell yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna make sure I do it. But at the same time, it was, it was a long, that was a long time. It was a long road to say like, there was a lot of, a lot of ups and downs to where it was like, man, like how the fuck, how am I gonna do this? Like he's not here and how, how am I gonna do this? Like. The, to this day, every day, I, I look to his voice for comfort. Very, very relaxed man. And what that also means is very powerful. <laughs> and yeah, there's, 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 um, there's comfort and power, and that's the epitome of my thought. Though it's, he's a very powerful man, and I didn't have that for a long time. I didn't have that voice directly in my ear. I had the voice, me telling myself I could still hear him, but. I mean, just like anything else with time, it kind of fades away and it gets hard. So, because you told me earlier that you used to go see him, so you didn't have him in your corner. Mm -hmm. What was his influence like on your boxing being apart from you? Like like a time you would spend a visitation or whatever, like mm -hmm. what would that 